Hey guys, it's Avondale. We are back on the winning putt, and I'm just standing here, people watching, seeing some people get around. Uh, looks like Demo Poo is practicing her parkour skills. I've been practicing my parkour skills as well with Stelio, as you can see. Made it all the way up onto the sign here. I'm a whole three feet off the ground. As uh, soon as I got up here, I called my mom, told her all about it. She was really proud of me. So, Christine's up here at the top, and she won't shut up because she wants us to do this mission here. So, we're going to start this mission. The memorial course that's covered with wonderful mountains is a Japanese-style course where impressive cherry blossoms are. Interesting. Anyone can easily play there because the terrain is flat and the fairway is wide. Challenge the first mission of the memorial, which announces the beginning of spring. Alrighty, let's start that mission. Friendly round number 2074, start. The bunker is a zone with sunken ground covered in sand. Did you know not every bunker has to have sand in it? Literally, bunker is just a sunken ground. Anyways, uh, this is a very easy stroke three holes round. Whoosh! All right. Cannot do your best if your stamina and mentality is low. Luckily, we're starting out with full. So, let's see. Pretty simple hole. And let's see if we can get Stelio off to the right start. Oh, fantastic. Beautiful shot. And every time I hit a slight pull or push or better, I'm progressing towards another one of my missions as well, uh, which is called Good Shot. So I have one of those, which is nice. I don't think I have to actually start that to do anything. Might actually be able to reach a screen in two as well. If we can hit the shot. Eh, not that great. We'll take it though. So today, I wanted to talk a little bit Fairway. about actual golf in real life, right? Because some of you already know this, but I actually used to play quite a bit back in high school. Uh, I was alright. It was one of those things growing up that was my sport, starting in middle school. It was just the thing that I did, and there weren't too many other of uh, my friends who were already into it. Uh, made a lot of friends as a result of golf, though. A lot of people started uh, either joining me, uh, or you know, there were people that already played on the team that would uh, eventually become my friends. So, in my hometown, we had one golf course it was a nine hole golf course and uh it was honestly a pretty easy course uh if you knew what you were doing it had uh some pretty challenging greens uh that was really its only main defense and that was where i learned how to play golf i before i played golf i was a baseball player and uh i always skied throughout my whole life but uh golf actually took me away from baseball and that was Pretty much all I did for a while. I competed in high school. I did okay. Certainly wasn't the best player in uh, in the state. <laughs> Anyways, it was a smaller conference we were in. But my senior year of high school, I did win our conference Fair title, way. which was kind of nice to do. Uh, I'm keep making progress on this mission, which is nice to see. Uh, Something always appealed to me about golf, like one of the things I didn't like about other sports was you couldn't really, like you could play a fantastic game of, say, baseball, for example, and your team could get absolutely destroyed, but you played the best game of your life, you know? It's like, as great as team sports nice. are, there's only so much an individual person can do, and that was kind of how I felt golf was different, even as a team sport, it was like, even if our team lost, I could still succeed individually and gain individual accolades from doing stuff well. So, always felt nice to win. You meet some really ridiculous people though. There was this one kid I used to play against and I tell people in real life stories about him all the time, but him and I were pretty much the biggest rivals ever because we were really closely skilled and throughout our high school careers he beat me every time we played at his course and I beat him every time we played at my course 
So there was like we were just evenly enough matched that we like the home course advantage was what separated us entirely. And uh that he was actually playing in the same group as me on uh in that conference final. That was the best shot I've ever hit in this game. Oh my goodness. Let's let's ha let's have a birdie there, Stelio. Uh yeah, he was playing in my group in that finals, but the, one of my favorite stories about him was uh, we were, geez, had to have been sophomores in high school, right? So we're probably about 15 years old, and the legal age for smoking in America is 18. You have to be 18 years old to smoke. And so as we're walking up the ninth hole of this course, his uh, our match is already done, he's already beat me. He pulls a cigar out of his bag and asks if I want to smoke, and then calls me a square when I don't want to smoke, and we're like, there's people watching and stuff, like, it's not, like, you're just alone. Oh, that's amazing, I'm still on the sign. <laughs> Can I just stay here forever? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this was the type of kid uh, that I had to deal with, and uh, when we did play uh, our senior year there, we we were in the same group, like I said. And we were neck and neck, and we got to, oh my goodness, caddy contract. Hold on a second, we'll come back to the story. So I can hire Tanya for 20 minutes. One, two, three, four, five times. And what does Tanya do? Tanya Jones, <laughs> is her name. Uh, the repair fee on clubs is 10% less. You can repair an enchant available in the portrait menu. Oh, is there a portrait menu up here? is that's kind of cool uh what else one additional mod slot that's good an additional skill slot it restores three percent additional stamina and mentality every time you hole out i haven't run into trouble with that yet but i could see why that would be useful if you weren't playing very well grants a bonus of 10 percent to the lucky ball gauge okay i would like a lucky ball score par or better for an additional 100 percent xp and 30 percent gold Right click a caddy from the caddy list in the manage option. Where's the manage option? Management maybe? Caddy. Michelle Hahn. Contract for okay, so this is this must be Chelsea. So maybe Chelsea did come up. Oh, I can change her name. Enter a custom name. Chelsea. There we go. Like I said, this is Chelsea. Uh <laughs> Okay. This is like the best game. I'm I'm so so happy with it. Uh yeah, so Chelsea is going to come with us now. Double-click the caddy contract ticket that you received as a reward, or right-click to make contract with the caddy. We're, we're going to try out Tanya Jones here. Uh, if I can remember how to get in there, I think it was in the inventory. There we go, yep. We'll double-click her. Yeah, I'm going to contract you for 20 minutes. The caddy is your best friend. I got 10 platinum for completing that. There we go. We're going to accompany Tanya Jones for 19 minutes. I have to get off my sign, unfortunately. I need to go back to a, a challenge round. Can I complete another mission? I already did that. Mission complete. Oh, there we go. Overcoming bogey. Bogey are better in friendly round five times. Okay, yeah, so we just need to go play another friendly round. So start that mission. Anyways, back to that story. Uh, this kid and I are playing against each other in the finals and we're neck and neck and we get to the 17th hole and I think I had him by a shot on the 17th hole and I played the hole pretty smart I hit a uh, good tee shot and a, either a good layup it was a it was this par five and it was one of the weirder holes that you'll ever play in your life it did this zigzag almost like if you ever seen a tree that like grows straight up and then all of a sudden it just grows sideways and then back up around like it's shaped like a C the hole almost does that in the middle right and so I managed to hit a good drive out on the corner of that thing and then hit my next shot up around it. Another perfect drive from Stelio. And then I hit my next shot up on the green, so I've got a birdie putt on this par 5, and I think I end up making par, but he tried to there take right. a chance and get it on the green in two because he knew he was a shot down, and he snapped hook his, his second shot, just a big curve to the left, and it ended up in the trees really really far below the surface of the green like we're talking like probably 40 feet or so uphill on his next shot 
Uh, not to mention the fact that he was in the woods. And he goes down there, he tries to hit a shot out of the woods, hits a tree and goes even further in the woods. And then he just drop kicks his bag. And I mean, he's always had like an aggression problem, like doing ridiculous things to get mad at himself, like spanking himself after bad shots and just all kinds of really weird things. But he actually straight up kicks his golf bag as hard as he could. And I was just laughing because i saw this whole thing and i was far enough away that he probably couldn't see my reaction to it hey a birdie for stelio uh but i was just absolutely dying laughing over that and it was at that moment like i kind of knew i had won and that whole rivalry of the two of us uh playing together all through high school really uh that was the last time we ever played each other and to go out on a win made me just feel so good i remember this other time my my freshman year there was a really good senior class on the team and uh, there was no room for me as uh, one of the top five golfers that year. I, I would alternate in as the fifth spot every once in a while, but they were all pretty talented, so I didn't really have an option to play up in the matches that mattered. And uh, there was this one time, this the kid that was my rival, his freshman year, we were the same year of class, uh, he was good enough uh, to be the number one on his team. Like He was actually a really good golfer. And uh, he was playing against our number one, obviously. And the guy who was playing on our number two was... Uh, he, he was a really easygoing guy, and he found humor uh, in situations that other people didn't, <laughs> right? And so I'm walking around with... Uh, I think my mom was walking around the course with me watching the match, and my the number one golfer on the team, his girlfriend at the time, was walking around with us as well. And so we get to the uh, the eighth hole, and uh, that was the hole that the that my rival lost to our number one on. And right before he lost, our uh, my number one, who quite honestly wasn't a very nice person either, tried to call him on a penalty that the guy may or may not have really taken. I didn't really know, but the other guy got mad and. Uh, didn't really like try to fight him but like got aggressive and he had a temper like we already talked about and so he didn't really handle it the best and so that happened and the match is over and on the next hole uh another like the match was already over and the kid, <laughs> my rival uh has this ball in the fairway and we were uh, there's a local rule that's in effect what the heck this is an interesting hole. There's a local rule in effect at uh, most of the courses in the area that I'm from that's called taking a preferred lie. And basically what you're able to do is because the grass conditions aren't always the best, you can mark your ball when you're in your own fairway with a tee or a ball marker or whatever. So you mark the ball and you can pick it up and move it anywhere within its usual... Oh my goodness, really? Still you? Oh, sad day. So you can move it anywhere within, uh, it's usually either a club length or a foot of, or, you know, however far of where the, uh, the ball actually was in the first place to give yourself a better lie. And so the match is already over, and, uh, the, my rival hits his ball in our fairway, like he's supposed to, on the right hole. And then he goes to give himself preferred lie, and instead of marking it with a T like he's supposed to, he decides he's just going to roll the ball over with his club in the fairway, which, to be fair, is actually illegal. But the match was over. He wasn't going to win the stroke medal uh, for the tournament, and there was really no reason for the guy to call him out on it. But of course the guy calls him out on it, right? And so this guy, my rival and the kid who was playing with them from the other school, both got really aggressive and got up all up in our number one golfer's face about it, and they were he was they were really mad at him. And uh, our number two, the guy who was uh, the really easygoing guy, finding comedy and everything, uh, instead of going down to uh, help out our number one in that uh, little confrontation, is he fell over laughing, rolling around on the hill, just dying laughing because he couldn't handle the situation that was going on. And <laughs> me and my mom and the guy's girlfriend are uh, up on the hill and we're all laughing too. And the kids from the other school heard us laughing and it just completely deflated their egos. And uh, that not only did they lose that individual mass, but they match, but they lost the whole, uh, the overall team match as well. And, it's just one of those things, like, people, and granted, our number one would forget this all the time, too, but a lot of times when you play a sport, 
you forget that it really is just a game, and sometimes you got to take it easy on other people and just have fun, and uh, that's, I don't know, I, I took a lesson away from that, you know, like, I, watching the way that our number two responded to that, like, he just saw the brighter side of the issue, and, uh, yeah, it was one of my... It could have turned into a really bad situation, and then it ended up being one of the fonder memories I've ever had of golf team in high school was just that little confrontation between uh, a couple of people that really didn't matter. Stelio, baby! All right, so so Tanya Jones is over there trying to give us all kinds of advice, and Stelio, with the exception of the, the biggest bunker on the face of the earth... Uh, is really playing quite a good round. I don't know, his, his haircut looked pretty Stelio at the beginning, but it's actually kind of kind of starting to look a little bit more Justin Bieber-y. Uh, I can't say I'm a big fan of that. Oh, Stelio, the perfect drive. Or the slight push, whatever. Either way, I've got that mission completed, I'm sure. Yeah, I can't actually claim the complete mission, though, I don't think, while I'm in a round of golf. Which is a shame, because I'd like to start reaping the benefits of those rewards. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and shorten up my club here. Looks like I'm using a little bit too much club. Another nice shot from Stelio. As long as we stay in the fairway, that's all that matters. Fairway. If you don't hit the sweet spot exactly, the driving distance or degree of accuracy is reduced. Look out. That's good to know. All right. See if we can't finish the round out strong here. Only a couple holes to go. Yeah. Not a big fan of that shot, but gotta admire the distance control. Looks like we have a pretty flat green over here as well. Nice. Any minute now. There we go. Oh wow! Talk about a flat green. All right. Let's see if Stelio can make a putt. Let's straight in. It's looking good. It's tracking. Oh, money. Tanya Jones is really impressed with that par. Really impressed. And I would be too. Anytime you can take a par when you can't reach the hole and... <laughs> I mean, I hit a driver, a long iron, and then another long iron to get all the way to that hole. And that was what I had to deal with. Alright, finishing hole, the par 5 here, it's got a split fairway, we're going to have to play it short though, so there's no sense even trying to figure out how to get there in the quickest way. I can't wait until Stelio is like level 600 and can hit the ball like a thousand yards, so we can play these courses a little bit better. Get out there! Man, that, they always put that longest fairway. drive line, I say they put it there, it's always just like two yards longer than I can possibly reach, it makes me so sad. So now here, we need to get out far enough that we can get around the trees. I think that'll probably be fine. See if we can get it out there. <laughs> I was kind of worried about not hitting a good shot there and not getting it in the fairway. I figured I had plenty of room to miss, but uh, hitting that fairway. nice spot on the bar will do it. And we're about halfway to level 5 as well, which is going to make that next mission a little bit easier, hopefully. Hoping we get there soon. Try a 7 iron in here. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, we just won't hit it entirely full. Right there. Oh, this could be money if I hit it on the dot. Eh, not quite. Come back a little bit, though. Pretty good shot. On in three, let's see. Oh, man. Okay, I'm right. very, very happy with that. Let's see if we can tap it in. Oh, dead straight. No worries. Birdie. And a birdie to finish for Stelio. The green in regulation, get the one putts. Starting to get the distance up a little bit, that's helping. But I'll tell you, out of one, two, six holes we played, we get three birdies, shot a one under par. Uh, not too bad for level four Stelio. Did it in five minutes. Way to go. We're up to 370 platinum now. We have almost 6,000 gold. We're going to head back to the square. We'll cash in this and we'll call it a day. There we go. Overcoming bogey. It looks like I made it. I'll have to get back on my sign before I do too many more things. Yeah, I have that to complete, and I have good shot to complete. 
that extra experience boost from Tanya Jones there got us to level 5. Hey! We completed the achievement. We got 10 more platinum, and I can complete that mission as well. Amazing. So I have all these new missions, and we'll tackle some of those next time. I've been Avidale. Thanks for watching.